asubuhi ya leo Yesu tunashukuru bwana kwa wema wako na fadhili zako asante kwa ukuu wako e bwana asubuhi ya leo nikipenda ukaribisha wewe mtumishi wa Mungu popote ulipo karibu katika kipindi hiki cha asubuhi hii baada hii tunayeanza shule ya huduma kwa hivyo juu imeika pamoja nasi tuweze kusikia mahusiano ya Mungu na Bwana tubariki zaidi kabla hapo ningependa tu fungue kinywa chako mshukuru Bwana kwa wema wake na fadhili zake asubuhi maana ni Mungu mkuu Mungu wa ajabu hakuna siloluweza Yesu tunakupenda Bwana tunakushukuru e Bwana wewe uelekeza hatua za wenye haki elekeza tu asitu asubuhi wewe unayetenda mambo makuu yanayozidi fahamu za mwanadamu tenda leo e bwana asante kwa sauti yako asante bwana tunakubariki e mfalme wa falme haleluya wewe ni bwana sifa na utukufu ni bwa Haleluya Oh 
One 
Son of God, thank you, Son of God, thank you, Son of God, because you can do anything. We confess that you are the Lord, and there is nothing you cannot do. Thank you, because of who you are into our lives, Jesus. You have become our righteousness. You have become our wisdom, our sanctification. You have become our God. Thank you, Lord, for this pastor's and leader's service. As we share your word, Lord, cause us to receive something that is going to help us build the work that Jesus you have given us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome every one of you. This is Tuesday morning. We usually have some time to fellowship with your pastors, apostles, prophets, church leaders, business people, Sunday school teachers. And our desire is to equip you, is to allow God to equip you through our lives. Because a man can receive nothing a man, a minister of the gospel, the servant of the Lord can receive nothing except it is given him, except it is given him from above. And you see James chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says every, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. You know, as you listen to the scriptures, as you listen to the word of God, you are going to receive something. Because every good and a perfect gift is from above. James 1 17 it says every good gift and every perfect perfect gift is from above is from above and the Bible says it comes down it comes down it comes down from the father of lights this father of lights is the one who has called you into ministry. Is the one who has appointed you into the ministry. Is the one who has anointed you. He has called you. He has appointed you. He has anointed you. He is called the father. The father of lights. Every good gift. So every gift you need in your own life and the ministry. Is a good God. That is a, is a good gift. And it is a perfect gift. And this one 
is from above from the father of lights so wherever you are servant of God this morning put your eyes on this God put your eyes on the God who gave you the ministry and that something is going to happen in your life because the one who called you is faithful the one who called you is together with you and so today we are going to learn on ministry and the everlasting power of God ministry and the everlasting power of God if you want to serve your generation adequately and if you want to subdue any opposition that it comes to oppose your life and also oppose your ministry you need this revelation of the everlasting power of God everlasting power of God everlasting and you see there is no need for you to serve a God, you know that he can be defeated. There is no need. And there is no need of a serving a God, you know that he will fail you, he will forsake you, and they will never stand with you. There is no need of serving such a God. But when this revelation is born in your spirit by the Holy Spirit and the confirmation of the, of the scriptures, you will live for God without fear. You will execute the duties of your ministry without fear because you know, you know the God who is backing you and again, you know the power that he has made available for your life, for your ministry. That is why 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, 1 Timothy 6, 16, the Bible says, Oh, only, this is speaking about the Lord Jesus. It says, Oh, only has immortality. He has immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto it says whom no man has seen nor can see then the bible says to whom be honor to whom be honor and power everlasting it says to whom be honor and power everlasting then the bible says amen there is power everlasting or everlasting power that is with our god so in your ministry servant of god whether you are an apostle a prophet a deacon a teacher of the word of god you are a minister in your praise and worship you are supposed to see God in absoluteness of his power. You are supposed to see the same power being available to you. This is what will help you to deliver men and the women who are bound by power of Satan. You'll be, you'll be able to set free those who are bound by demon spirits. The Bible calls it the power everlasting. Power everlasting. So servant of God, you're supposed to begin to hunger for God's power in your life. Because if you want your life to be impactful, you want your life to be fruitful, it is not going to be possible 
when you have no power when you have no power or when you don't have the revelation knowledge of the everlasting power of god before we go deeper into this meditation wherever you are i want you to begin to tell god deep down in your heart that you need him you need his power you will hear apostle paul just crying the same cry in philippians 3 10 you hear him saying he says that i may know him that i may know him then he says and the power of his resurrection so this everlasting power is the power of resurrection we are saved we are born again we are called into ministry and and then we are right in the work of the ministry and it is impossible to handle this assignment when you are powerless it is not easy for you to handle it when you are powerless because you are supposed to deliver man from the power of satan acts chapter 26 the bible says in acts chapter 26 when god appeared to apostle paul this is what the bible says in verse 15 acts chapter 26 verse 15 the bible says and i said who art thou lord who art thou lord and they said he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest i am jesus just listen this is our blessed lord jesus the christ the son of god speaking to apostle paul he tells him in verse 16 he says arise he says but arise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister so listen carefully to make you a minister so ministers are made by jesus ministers are made by god they are made by the holy spirit so he can make you he can make you the vessel he wants you to be he can equip you with the grace he can fill your life with the with the truth he can anoint you with the holy spirit and with the power you can succeed anywhere as a man of god wherever god leads you so the bible says but arise and stand upon thy feet for i have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister a minister and not and not just a minister but a witness you are supposed to be both a minister and a witness a minister and a witness who is a witness is somebody who was there when it was happening or somebody who can produce proof who can produce evidence of what he knows and so man of god the woman of god i want you to come to a level where you can tell anybody anywhere that you are a minister of god and you are his witness his witness you can produce proofs that you know god you can produce evidence that god is together with you 
The Bible says to make thee a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will appear unto you. You become a witness. And as you know from Acts chapter 1 verse 8 without opening, you see, this is what the Bible says. It says, it says, but you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. So you can be a witness, a proof producer if you have no power. If you have no power. If you have no knowledge of God's power. If you have no knowledge of God's power. So the Bible says you shall receive, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So I want you to see the necessity, necessity of divine power in your own life as a man of God. So listen what Acts chapter 16 verse, 12, verse 17 says. It says delivering thee from people. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles and to whom now I send you. Now he is being commissioned. Jesus is commissioning Apostle Paul to go and fulfill his ministry. And he's showing him clearly that it will not be possible, possible when there is no knowledge, revelation knowledge, when you have no encounter with the power of God, when you don't have experience with this with this mighty power of God, you will not be able to handle this because this is spiritual power. It is a spiritual power that you need in your own life and ministry. It says, it says unto whom now I send thee, then verse 18, our, our main scripture at, at this point of teaching, the Bible says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. He, you man and a woman of God, there is no way you will turn men from darkness to light when you are powerless. It will not be possible. If you believe in a church growth like me, I believe in church growth. If you really believe in signs, wonders, and miracles as a man of God, power, God's power must become part of your life. God's power. And so, this is what the Bible says to open their eyes. You see, for you to open the eyes of, of people who don't know God, the eyes of their minds, the, heart, the eyes of their hearts, to see reality of God in their lives, you need power. Divine power. It says to open their eyes and to turn them, to turn them from darkness to light. Then it says, and from the power of Satan, power of Satan unto God. So the Satan from this scripture, he has power over people who are not born again. He has rule over them. So for you to deliver them from the power of darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to the power of God, you need it. You need this power. That is why it has been not easy 
for so many pastors to succeed the way they desire to succeed. There is, you see, we many pastors struggle. It is true. Churches struggles for years. And this is not the will of God. This is not the will of God. I say to you clearly, this is not the will of God. The will of God is for you to walk in liberty. You walk in liberty. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Faith that is in me. You see Jesus is speaking here. He says which are sanctified by, by faith that is in me. So there is faith inside Jesus. Even after resurrection, there was, there is, there was, there is, and there shall ever be faith in Jesus. And so listen, wherever you are, God wants you to turn men from their sins to righteousness, from sicknesses and diseases to health and, and vitality. But this will be an exercise in futility when there is no divine empowerment by the Holy Spirit. It will be an exercise in futility without the endowment of power from on high. And so wherever you are this morning, begin to desire this divine everlasting power of God to become part of your life and your ministry will not your ministry will not crawl you will become effective you will help the needy spiritual you see those who are needy spiritually you will help them those who are bound mentally by satanic forces as a man of God, you are sent by God to liberate these people from the forces of the enemy. And it is not possible without the, the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When you check the ministry of Jesus, for example, when you check from the Gospels, as we usually call them, that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When you check on this, you realize that it is impossible for God's work to progress on the face of the earth without the power of God. It is not possible. Just checking on the life of Jesus briefly before we see what he said about the power God's word in Luke 4 Luke 4 the Bible says in verse 14 you see it says and Jesus returned Jesus think about it this is the son of God it was the word that became flesh with the spirit without measure in his life. And the Bible says in Luke 4.14. And Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. So this is power of the spirit. It is a spiritual power. You cannot see it with your naked eye. But you can see the effect of this power. You cannot deny. Jesus returned in the power of the, of the Spirit unto Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. 
You see, those who are sick were healed. Those who are bound by demons and unclean spirits were loosed by the Lord Jesus. This is the reason why you need the same power in your generation. This is the reason why you need the same, same power. Luke chapter 5, sorry, the same book, Luke chapter 4. You see, Jesus was in a synagogue somewhere, beginning, you see, let, let me read verse that one, Luke for that one. And, it, and they came down to Capernaum, home, Jesus now, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. He was teaching them on a Sabbath day. Verse 32 says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with the power. His word was with the power. God's people, whether you are a teacher of the word of God, an evangelist, a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, ushers, Praise and worship ministers, choir ministers. You see, ministry is impossible without power. You, even if you are a cleaner in the house of God, you are supposed to be endued with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is the necessity of power in life and ministry. The Bible says, for his word was with the power. His word was with the power. And you see, he was able to rebuke demons, to silence forces of darkness. And the Bible says in verse 36, look for that 6. It says, and when, it says, and they were all amazed. And they spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this? What a word is this? For with authority and the power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. You see, you command evil forces. There is no way you can break their influence over lives of people if you have not this revelation of the everlasting power of God. Somebody who is following this meditation this morning, I want you to see the need of this divine supernatural power in your own life. And in your own ministry. Doesn't matter what you are what you are doing in the ministry, you need this power. The Bible says, For with authority and the power he commands, you see, this spiritual power will put you in a divine command where you will be commanding things to happen on their own accord. You need this. And you see, I see these things in the ministry of Jesus. And that, that is why we are supposed to have them. He was in another place teaching. This is in Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 verse 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 19. The Bible says, And the whole multitude it says, and the whole multitude sought, sought to touch him. Why? The Bible says, for there went virtue, went virtue out of him. The virtue there is, is power, divine power. This is the presence of God. This is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. This is the power of God who was so real in his ministry. The word of God says, For there went virtue out of him, and healed them all. He healed 
he healed them all. Glory to God. So if you have a vision of seeing men and women set free from the forces of the enemy, this is what you need in your life. This is what you need in your life. The divine power of God. The divine, divine power of God. This, um, this is what changed my life. This is what changed my ministry. And I believe this morning, as you meditate in the area of power with God, you are going to change in a permanent way. The reason why we do error or we are mistaken in our lives and in our ministries is simply because of powerlessness. Matthew 22, 29. It shows you the reason why we are mistaken. The reason why we do error. It is because of two things from that one scripture. It says you are mistaken. Matthew 22, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, you do error. Not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. So there is a need of knowing, combining the knowledge of the scriptures with the knowledge of the power of God. Those two things, man of God, woman of God, wherever you are, these two things will put you into a dimension in life and ministry where you will be able to produce excellency. You produce the glory of God. That is, you see, you see things happening in your life and you will be magnifying the name of the Lord. The Bible says you do error. You do error. Not knowing the scriptures. That is lacking, lacking the knowledge of the scriptures not knowing not just knowing scriptures but it says knowing the scriptures possessing the revelation knowledge from the word of god then it says nor the power of god so you are supposed to know to know to know the unlimited power of god as a servant of god and you see, as I always say, every power has a source. Every power has source. So you are supposed to know the source of your power in your own life and in your own ministry. You see, there are times people will brand your names, call your names. They will call you a devil worshiper as if the devil has more power than God. They will say that you are a member of secret societies like Illuminatis and those dirty things. But listen, God is the power and the strength of your life. You are called to do something that is eternal. You are called to do something that is eternal. That is why you need the revelation of the everlasting power of the Most High God. Man of God, this is just an, an appointer because, in fact, I will continue with this teaching at 1 that p.m. today because I feel I've not exhausted it and I want to share more in that line of ministry and everlasting power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Dear servant of the Lord, wherever you are, I request you to stand on your feet and lift up your hands to God and tell him, thank you for choosing me. Thank you for appointing me into ministry. Thank you for putting me into your work. And this work is not possible without this 
divine energy of God. This divine supernatural empowerment of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit and power. Father, in the name of Jesus, there is a need to deliver people from the forces of the enemy. To take territories for you. Because the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he has taken power and now is ruling. Jehovah in the name of the Lord where these men and women are at this day let the spirit of power come upon their lives in the name of Jesus strengthen your servants even in this challenging moment when we are not gathering in our assemblies I pray for bishops around the world I pray for apostles around the world. I pray for the ministers of the gospel, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists, church leaders, deacons, ushers, praise and worship ministers, choir ministers, everybody who serves in the house of God. Sunday school teachers, security officers, all the protocol teams in churches around the world. Mighty God, mighty God, living God, mighty God, living God, release your strength upon our lives. Release your Holy Spirit upon your servants. Release your glory upon them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, this work that you have put in our hands is not possible without you. It's not possible without your blessing without your presence without your power without your authority oh jesus Servants of the Lord, servants of the Lord, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Spirit. There is need for power, there is need for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a higher measure. There is a need of the strength of the Lord strength of the Lord in our lives that we may begin to see miracles signs and wonders following the ministry of the Holy Spirit following our lives Father, let the wholesomeness of your presence, let the goodness of the Lord, let the goodness of the Lord just enter into our lives. Jehovah, we give you the glory. We worship you. Worship the maker, the one who gave you the ministry. For you are the king of kings. For you are the lord of lords. 
for you are excellent in power for you are holy you are holy you are holy you are so wonderful thank you because you are with us thank you because you are with us as we serve you thank you son of god thank you son of god blessed father i pray for the body of christ on earth this morning in the name of the lord jesus let there be fresh release of your spirit in the church of kenya let there be a new surge of power from your hand O oh god let men and women all labor every day to teach your word around the world jehovah i pray for them let your strong hand be upon all your servants around the world those who are in africa those who are in asia those who are in australia those who are in north and south america jehovah we lift your servants this morning and we commit them to you let them receive their inheritance because of the faith we have in you son of god father those who have challenges with the sicknesses diseases men and women of god who are attacked in the area of diseases and the sicknesses jehovah heal them i pray that your healing power will come upon these servants of god i pray for those who are challenged persecuted in china persecuted in indonesia wherever there are this day jehovah let your everlasting power come upon these servants wherever they are those who are going without food those who are going without food naked persecuted Jehovah, you know them and you know where they are. Stretch forth your hand, oh God, and touch these families. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for these dear ones who are with us in this service. Let the anointing upon my life also come upon them. Let the blessing of the Holy Spirit upon me be upon them. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. One of the things we will always do when we gather to worship is to honor God with our offerings. Servant of God, woman of God wherever you are this day give an offering to God in the name of Jesus our giving informations are there with you can you go to Mpesa Lipana Mpesa buy goods and services our church till number is there 84690 may the blessing and the presence of God follow your life and ministry in Jesus name
Tunakuwa buri mwana Wewe 